Um, so we were sort of focused on looking at uh, some of the maintainership issues um, of the like perpetually growing number of modules uh, and the growing community and small number of people who are maintainers uh, and trying to ease some of that burden. Uh, we're focused more particularly on the JavaScript side of things than on the Go side of things, partially because this comes out of an issue that was posted focused on the JavaScript side, partially also because nobody who was that focused on the Go side showed up. Uh, so that's a big caveat for all of this. Um, and uh, there's, I think it's, is it IPFS notes 273? That's the, that's the issue that this comes off of. And these super rough notes are posted back there, and it's my job later today to post a much more nicely written version. Um, but so here's sort of our work plan and list of things that we thought was important to do uh, and who needs to do them that we came up with. Some are fairly vague and some are very specific. Um, so one thing that we think is really important right off the bat is that uh, what's already happening in JS land, which is that every module needs to have a clear uh, maintainer or owner. Um, and one of the first things that maintainer or owner needs to do is pick a reasonable level of code coverage, which is less than 100%. Um, but it does need to be something that they think is a reasonable level to make sure to maintain um, and make sure to use the coverage tools that now all modules are running in CI. Um, not everybody knows how to use and monitor those, and we need to do that uh, and make sure that we're maintaining that reasonable level. Um, the next thing that kind of needs to happen uh, is that we need to start doing automated releases for a lot of modules. We have serious issues about our capability to do that for some of the bigger ones like JSIPFS as a whole. Um, so we're going to start doing it ASAP with the smaller ones um, like JS repo or ones like that uh, or like multi-address or multi-hash um, and then sort of scale it up from there. And the next thing is that uh, Michael is going to start working on, or is actually already working on uh, uh, trying to document a project lifecycle because we think there are a large number of practices that are really important to ease maintainership as projects mature that are anti-helpful when projects are really young. Um, and so that lifecycle, part of its goal is to sort of define that and define how we make those transitions. Um, and part of that is, uh, so kind of defining what are those requirements at a given point in a project's maturity level. Um, another part of that is making sure projects live in the right place. We have a huge number of repos that sit in the IPFS org or the shipyard org that kind of just sit empty or are maybe deprecated or dead. Um, and an important practice we can do to ease burdens is make sure that those don't live in those sort of more official places until something like JSIPFS or GoIPFS or whatever is actively depending on them. And part of the pull request to add that dependency is the movement of that experimental repo from your personal place or whatever into the IPFS org or into the shipyard org. There are some exceptions like when we're extracting, say, GoIPNS out of Go, where it's fairly solid straight from the get-go. But for most other things, we need to be clear about not putting it in a very official place straight off the bat because that creates burdens that we shouldn't shouldn't be enduring. Um, also adding a lot of automatic checking. We have some for linting, but we don't have some that we're, we have some that's not running everywhere for code quality. And another really important thing for maintainability is clear documentation. Uh, and so we're looking into how on the JavaScript side, we can test to ensure that there's JS doc comments for everything that is uh, exported. Not necessarily that we're going to generate those docs, but ensuring that somebody is writing them and thinking about them from day one, because having that clear documentation for something really immature can create an impression that it's more solid than it is. Um, but we need somebody to be writing and thinking about those docs so that when it flips over to a more mature state, it's not like there's this giant pile of work that is undone and then gets poorly done. Um, and then there's some other things that are very JS specific, uh, sort of we need to have a unified story around how we deal with async type stuff. So that's single call and response stuff like callbacks versus promises versus async await and also uh, longer things like uh, streams versus pull streams versus async generators. Um, 
part of the issue is not that we support all of those things, and it's important to continue supporting all of those things at the top level, like in the JS IPFS API, but for all the sub-modules and sub-packages, um, we should pick one and not worry about those ones exposing an interface that's cross-compatible everywhere. We just need to ease the burden, and this is the way everything works internally and even externally for the sub-packages that aren't the main public package. Um, and there's a few more of these things, more uh, using GitHub checks and more bots for things, um, using branch protection everywhere, always on all repos, uh, and looking at the, on the, uh, oh, and the other really big thing is we have these two contributor guides in community, one of which is long and the other of which is unbelievably long, uh, it names contributors two which is very confusing to lots of people. We need to rename that to maintainers or uh, committers or more involved, you know, sort of team members. Um, and for the first one, which is still long, we need, it needs a TLDR section at the top that just says, do this, do this, do this. And then all the why and explanation that it's got below that. A um, few other things, look at the issue for all the more details, but those are sort of the critical things we thought were important to do to increase maintainability.